Hey everyone, welcome back. Shark here with a real high tempo 1v1 today on Toronto coastline. Playing as the Americans is Full Counter, the number 164 ranked 1v1 player. And then opposite him is Quarzim, playing as the DAC ranked number 141. Casting with me tonight, bringing a lot of energy and a lot of fun, is my buddy Stealth Elf. Uh, really enjoyed this match. Uh, super aggressive play from both sides. Really looking forward to the post-match discussion. As always, we'll do links and timestamps in the description below. And with that, we'll roll on to the video. All right, everyone. Uh, here in the, the bottom of the map, uh, the southeast corner, if you want to be technical, we've got Quarzim playing as the DAC. And then opposite him, we've got Full Counter playing as the USF, who's immediately locked in armored. Uh, casting with me today is uh, my favorite white boy. And if you've ever been in his Discord, you'll know why we say that. Uh, Stealth Elf. Stealth, how you doing tonight, man? I am doing simply phenomenal. Um, if you haven't joined the Sarge GG, it's such a good community for sure. Uh, me and Shark are members, and it's been absolutely phenomenal. Find fantastic, quirky games with some cool guys. Yeah, I agree. It's a it's a great community and very positive. Trying to eliminate the toxicity uh, in one player, one replay at a time. Heck yeah! So you feel like Gotham out here, man. Just doing superhero work. <laughs> yeah. So. So starting off early, Quarzim going with the uh, Italian combined arms. He's got a squad of Bursas out. And he's also got his Karad Shitsun kind of capping up the fuel on the flank. And with the Bursas, he's going to push deep. Um, interesting to see what he goes for here if he's trying to cut off that fuel. There's not a clean cutoff uh, on this map. Um, he's got his Panzer Pioneers capping on the opposite side. Meanwhile, full counter going armored and double jeep. Uh, with the vet one so they can cap so he should have pretty decent capping power here I've actually never seen double jeep. That's actually really interesting. It's a good good mechanic too um, To take advantage of obviously you probably want to go into an engineer here soon If he wants to keep these like beats healthy. I mean I do I know they have that ability but it could, it, it Obviously is a cooldown Yeah, so this was really meta in the previous patch and actually these bursts are in trouble with both jeeps and the scouts oh, pushing on them Yeah, bye <laughs> And the jeeps can chase here, but the bursts are probably okay on retreat. Oh my goodness, that is crazy. That burst just got absolutely demolished. He's dead. And inadvertently, counters kind of played into, or yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Warzim's played into full counters' hands uh, because the bursts don't have a vehicle counter, right? They don't have snares like the Panzer Grenadiers do. So these jeeps are going to be able to run around, uh, and the jeeps should scale well against the crowd shoots in as well. And do really well against the motorcycle as well. Yep. That's fantastic. Wow. Looks like we got our first rifle rifleman squad out here for full counter as well to try and help uh, mitigate any type of uh, vehicle play with these snares if he techs grenades here soon. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know. For me personally, um, whenever I play this map, like you're talking about, Shark, uh, with the whole cutoff thing, being able to cut off people's resources and stuff, um, this map in particular, I struggle with so much in my 1v1 play. And the only reason being is that what happens is they'll like get huge amounts of fuel control, or they'll keep decapping my fuel. And then next thing you know, I have like a tiger knocking on my front doorstep asking for lunch money, and I don't even know what to do. Yeah, and that can be that can be a challenge on this map with the fuel on the flanks. If you don't have the micro to cap uh repeatedly uh when you're outside of engagements uh you'll fall behind and that that is tricky for a lot of players in this game in 1v1 um honestly i think that's why i focus a lot on 2v2 is the maps tend to be a little bit narrower so the micro tax is reduced uh compared to 1v1 the oh, crowd sure, keeps like the scouts break. from capping here oh yeah oh my god that was a, that was clutch and it forces the scouts off uh Full counter doing a good job playing wide here, right? Capping across the front and maintaining pressure with the Jeeps. Sure. Ooh. Really oh, just hit a mine. One Jeep down to him. A well-placed mine uh, by Quarzim. And, oh. and, Quarzim, I, is it Quarzim? Quarzim? I, you know, I'm part Polish, so I default to kind of like a Polish pronunciation. I apologize if I'm getting it wrong. I think you got it right. I would say Quarzim. <laughs> I wonder if he's gonna go for the for the burst. Yeah, he did. He went uh, burst slow bolster. So now the bursts are gonna be a little bit stronger, a little bit more hardy against these rifleman squads. But I think what really sets them apart of making them actually be able to go toe to toe is whenever they get those um, uh, LMGs that they get. Oh yeah. Well, and he's got Panzer Jaegers out now as well, anticipating an additional kind of light vehicle uh, build from full counter. 
which he is going mechanized, might I point out, for the support center. That I'm glad that is seeing a lot more play in this version, this balance patch. Uh, we're not seeing as much of the the ubiquitous captain and infantry support center, which is nice. Um, for sure, a little bit of variety. The rifles, uh, one squad is going to get away, and now uh, Corzum being pinched and forced to retreat off of the center. But he is counter capping the fuel with the Panzer Pioneers, so uh, good micro kind of across the map, even though he, he lost the engagement here. It's amazing to see how these high level players are able to just, you know, micro in like, it, while a, a, a full on battle is going on with most of their army, they're able to, like, you know, get behind enemy lines. And look at this, a cheeky mine going down. For uh, the Panzer Pioneers here, okay, uh, gonna put down a, a mine I'll here to hopefully catch that Jeep out, the last remaining Jeep. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, you know, I know the units prefer the actual paths. I wonder if that mine's kind of placed awkwardly. We will find out. I mean, I'm definitely not a high-level player, but I would have to agree with you. The path is kind of a little bit more towards the left there. Yeah. Okay, a little bit of a skirmish here. On the mission like with the bursters, so we decide to get the heck out of Dodge. And that's the upside to the Jeep, is you can get across the map quickly. Oh, these pioneers continue to build the sandbags, and they're going to lose a couple of models. Uh, and at least not complete the cap. So full counter is able to prevent the full decap uh, of his fuel. And good to point out that units do take more damage while they're repairing or building things. Yep. Oh, these pioneers are in trouble. Well, they're going to go down. Oh, they oh, are no. done. The Vet 1 Panzer Pioneers rest in pepperoni. Adios. And the Jeep eats a couple of Panzerbuchs around, but not enough to kill it. We got a flak track and a med truck coming out now. Full counter, relatively light. Uh, you know, he lost his scouts. He's got three rifle squads. The uh, Greyhound coming out, that'll be really helpful. Um, Especially he against the Bursas, just being able to, like, you know, bully them across the map without any support of the Panzer Grenadiers. Yeah, and or, uh, forgive me, Panzer Jaeger. Yeah, there's only one squad of Panzer Jaegers on the field. Uh, they can't be everywhere, although their camouflage is really, really useful. And we're gonna see oh, the look. Greyhound and the Flak Track go toe to toe. Oh, and I, on the bottom left. I love this. Him reversing the Flak Track into battle so it can engage immediately. That's uh, that's really sharp and something that you don't have to do because the Flak will rotate. Uh, but it is something that speeds up the engagement for you. With that suppression, it's a very valuable unit. And we did see here on the bottom left here, here that he actually is using that new ability with the mechanized company to designate uh, repair. Okay. Oh. Where did he set that up? On the strategic point? Oh, these riflemen are done. Oh. No. Oh. That hurts. Full counter kind of in a bad spot right now. He's already down two squads and only has a uh, very, very little map presence here. And now these Panzer go in Jeep hunting. And with the half track, the Jeep is not going to be able to escape. Oh, man. No. And suddenly counter finds, finds himself on the back foot. Rifles forced to retreat. Man, such a such a huge full swing from when we saw at the beginning of the, uh, of the match whenever he was absolutely bullying all the Bursas with his Jeeps and he had so much map control and now it's almost like it's been completely turned upside down. Yeah. I wonder, so he has good manpower. He obviously has a motor pull out. An AT gun here might be useful in countering the half tracks, the flak track, uh, and all these other vehicles. Not enough to get an instant kill, but certainly enough to force them to, to think twice about uh, some of these engagements. Another Greyhound coming out, though, and I think that's a good answer to the Bursas and the Flak Track. He just has to find a counter to these Panzer Jaegers. I would have to agree, for sure. You think bars might be the answer, but not with that fuel. Look at that fuel that he has. He has almost nothing. Yeah, uh, that's why I think... Oh, so he just got War Machine, right? So now his vehicles will come out much cheaper. Oh, and now this Half Track is in trouble. The Panzer Jaegers are going to hop out. The Half Track goes down. If these Pinsergers aren't careful, these Greyhounds are going to annihilate them. They're on I'm retreat. Not, I'm not the Caught your hand in the cookie jar, didn't you? <laughs> Flak Track tries to counter, but is not going to do much damage to this Greyhound. And as though those Bursas do look intimidating, they're not going to do much against the Greyhounds. Yeah. I think he's smart here. He's not over committing, knowing... I don't know if he saw the second squad of Panzerjägers. 
uh not over committing with the greyhounds but doing some damage because i think the key for full counter to get back in this game is he has to really pick and choose his engagements and he has to make sure that he wins and stays clean as far as mistakes go i would have to agree oh 100 percent looks like that mine on the top left was never hit either i do believe we were right on that being a bit of an awkward position yeah it who knows it might be the uh the mine that turns the game later on the, the little mining that could, I believe, is how the, the terrible goes. Blackjack here to try to push off the rifles. And I actually like how he's got the Panzer Jaegers set up in camouflage near the flak track, trying to lure the Greyhounds in. Um, that's the danger of the Panzer Jaegers. You don't see them until you eat the first shot. And at that point, sometimes with these vehicles, they're very slow to reverse and not as responsive. So they'll get even a second, maybe even a third volley off. And then before you know it, you're... Uh, your, your your brand spanking new greyhound has got several holes in it. Now he is investing armored skirts for these greyhounds. I don't think that's a bad play at all, especially with the uh, very light AT answers that he's giving um, full counter with these with the Panzer Jaegers. Um, I don't think that that's a bad choice at all. They're going to be a little bit more hardy. They're going to be able to stay in the fight a little bit longer to start uh, whittling down those bursas and bleeding him with manpower. And then uh, ultimately, I want to see him try and take out this flak, this flak half track that's been giving him just a pain in the neck to try and capture these VPs. Yeah, agreed. He does have an AT gun coming out as well. So Greyhounds to counter the infantry and AT gun to counter the vehicles. Uh, interesting build, but it has the potential as long as he can avoid making big mistakes. Oh, for sure. You can and, tell he's I mean, nervous about some of these engagements and losing infantry on retreat because these rifles retreated immediately. I mean, he just has so much map presence right now. It's hard to like, he's kind of pushed into his base. You can see that anytime that he's trying to capture ground, there's a unit there to respond. Although he is recovering, full counter is recovering his fuel and capping on the side of the map with the Greyhound screening and an AT gun in the rear. I think that's very smart. Putting the putting the Greyhounds here uh, with the upgraded skirts on the front lane to soak up a little bit of damage from these Panzer Jaegers. Throwing the uh, the AT gun behind them. Oh, here we go. Out of this skirmish. They're not, unfortunately, not chunking down these Panzer Jaegers fast enough. One is going to retreat, and one Greyhound will back up. Oh, there we go. That there was the shot that he needed. There we go. And that's a, something you see with these high level players all the time is they're able to micro a tank just back just enough to where they're still in the fight fighting, but the aggro gets pulled to the healthier tank, yep. keeping your firepower still intact. Yep. Using that repair point in the rear to keep his Greyhounds at full health. Which I think was a fantastic implication uh, with, the new, uh, with the new change uh, with the support group uh, to mechanize. I think it's just going to use, it's so much more valuable than having to put your tank all the way back in the base to try and get that healing. Yeah. Now, interesting full retreat from the rifles there. I don't know if that was in the response to the grenade. Um, but they're going to back all the way out. I guess, they, again, he's still nervous about them getting caught. Another Greyhound now coming out for full counter. And one thing of note, he, he built two uh, engineers, which are helpful in terms of laying mines and maintaining uh, the health of his vehicles. But... Uh, Parzim has a P3 out on the field, which is a really good counter to the Greyhound. Uh, oh, so very good. this is going to come down to that AT micro, AT gun micro, uh, for full counter. It's like this motorcycle is up here just recapping everything that he just capped, sadly, with these munitions. I mean, I, you see the deficit in, in resources here, uh, is not as, is not as big as I would think it to be. Yeah, but the deficit in VPs is, is definitely... Uh, going to be felt. Full counter is already down 250, um, and he is out of position right now. Greyhound's exploring the center. Um, he's about to get pinched. And here you have Corzin with a, an AT gun deployed via the half track. Uh, and then on his flank, unbeknownst to full counter, is a P3 in the flak track. Oh, and here, oh, here it comes. I just, so now he sees the P3. He knows it's there because it's attacking the rifle or the engineer squad. Excuse me. AT gun knocks out a half track. Very good. Already proven its worth. And look at that. Immediately rotating the, the anti tank gun after seeing the P3. Yeah, that's smart. Panzer is forced to retreat, which is definitely helpful for those Greyhounds. Uh, but the flak track and the P3 are too much. Both players actually back off. 
The problem now is Quarzum has both fuels, uh, and so even though Full Counter took the solo VP, he is still at a deficit both in terms of resources uh, and in VPs. Greyhound train coming to push off these Bursas. It's like uh, one of uh, both engineers he actually upgraded with the hazard removal package. Which I like because it also improves their rem uh, their repair speed. Oh. Anti-tank gun may get a volley. There we go. Oh, it might get chunked down. Oh, and it whiffs its shot on the flat track. Oh, but the Bursas yeah. are going to get punished by the Greyhounds. Not after taking that anti-tank gun out of the, out of the field there. Maybe oh, if he gets his engineers down. on there. No. A second AT gun. This P3 could go down here. Oh, but the shot misses. The Greyhound's unable to penetrate. One Greyhound goes down. Fantastic micro over here from Quarzum. Oh. He's got the ability on the flat field with the white phosphorus rounds, taking out two Two of, of the Greyhounds. Greyhounds. Wow, that is devastating. And simultaneous engagements on the opposite side of the map. Rifles make a good push, but end up losing a number of models. Yeah. That, while it wasn't a bad engagement for full counter, it wasn't the decisive kind of really clean engagement he needed. And now he's reacted by getting a Chaffee out. And this is the problem. When you're in a resource deficit for an extended period, you're forced to rely on these bridging units rather than you know the end game meta tanks that you want i mean we already see quarzum just running away with the fuel i mean look at that 130 he uh, obviously already has his uh panzer command and uh out and everything like that yeah you know what this means with the the state of the dac meta it's tiger time it's tiger time it is tiger time oh there it is there's the audio cue yep yeah, so he's uh, upgrading armored reserves right now. Jaffe went P3 hunting, but smartly, uh, Quarzum has the P3 in his base. And now the AT gun and Panzer Jaegers to pressure this Chaffee. Oh, that is not what we want to see. It is it is dangerously low already. Yeah, and disastrously ineffective against infantry. So what do you think full counter needs to do to get back into this game, especially uh, now that this Tiger is inevitably coming? What do you think that he needs to build in order, or what do he needs to do to get back in this game? I feel like he lacks some field presence. Now, all the Bursas are dead, right? Which yeah. means that uh, he doesn't really have to worry about countering infantry so much as these Panzer Jaegers. So I feel like with the manpower he's floating uh, and two AT guns, if it were me, I'd go for another rifle squad and I'd make sure I have the grenades upgraded, right? Because if you can catch out the flak track or the P3, right, then you can snare them and then use your AT guns to punish them for pushes. And then other than that, I would really focus on it maintaining at least one of the three VPs and starting to push for that second. Um, Which, I mean, he's got one already and he's capping another. So stopping this bleed is of his utmost importance right now. That's got to be on the top of the grocery list. <laughs> yeah. Another Greyhound coming out. He is floating a ton of manpower, but almost no fuel. Um, that's why I think either, you know, another AT gun is risky because it could get pushed off relatively easily. But Quarzum doesn't have a ton of infantry, so um, like I said, another rifle squad, maybe a side tech, the weapon support center, and a couple bazooka squads uh, could be an option. Oh, for sure, especially against the P3s. Um, also having that upgrade, oh no, engineers getting pushed out. And they're in a bad spot. They should be okay. No, the P3's gonna chase, oh, that shot hurt. Oh no. And that engineer squad is done. And straight to Grandma Conti. Adios. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that, that was pretty good. I like that. <laughs> AT yeah, gun comes up to support. Played, if you guys haven't played the single player of the campaign, it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> wow, oh, nice wide ranging oh. engagement here. This is where the snares for the rifle squads would be really helpful. Oh, Panzer Jaegers taking some damage i mean they're a good unit because they can go camouflage but they're just not that hardy they only have so many models oh one greyhound goes down to a combination of the ap rounds and the at gun uh Barzum's at gun gonna survive and this engagement just not going full counter's favor 
Chaffee oh, can chase Chaffee here. Might be able to do something, though. The P3 on the flank means that even if the Chaffee succeeds in killing the flak, it's almost certainly a one-for-one -one trade. Oh, the motorcycle's getting caught out by the Greyhound. A couple of whiff shots, though. Oh my goodness, two whiffs in a row. Here comes a P4. No. Oh no, full counter. You're oh. getting fully countered. What are you doing? <laughs> motorcycle goes down, but so does the Greyhound. The flak track's going to escape. And it looks like the Chaffee is going to die here to the Panzer Jaegers. But look Ooh. at this aggression full counter was able to pull off. Oh no, there's the GG. And there's the GG. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> hey everyone. Uh, we are back. Uh, pretty awesome. High tempo game there. Uh, really pumped. So uh, before we get into the discussion, as always, we start with the build order here. Uh, so full counter plane is the U.S. Um, he rolled into the armored battle group, uh, right away. So he starts with his scouts, goes two Jeeps with the veterancy so they can cap, uh, into three rifle squads and then, uh, two Greyhounds, uh, an engineer and a T gun, a second engineer, uh, another Greyhound. He ended up, uh, building four of them, uh, then a second AT gun and finally a Chaffee, uh, before the game kind of, uh, rolled and he threw in the towel. Uh, and then for Quarzim, who played as the Italian Combined Arms Battle Group as the DAC, started with his Panzer Pioneer uh, into a Bersaglieri squad, then a Karad shoots in to help him cap, a second Bursa squad, uh, then he got out a Panzer Jaeger squad, a Flak Half Track, a Med Truck, which he actually had queued up at the same time, which I think is interesting, um, a second Panzer Jaeger squad with the Half Track, which proved really effective at dealing with the Jeep, uh, then he got out a Panzer III, uh, the Pack 38, uh, pulled on by a half track, and then finally the Panzer IV assault group right at the end of the game there. Um, so, Stealth, we had a couple of interesting discussions kind of uh, when we were off camera. Uh, you wanted to talk about the Jeep opening uh, for full counter. Oh, I definitely did. Um, I've actually never seen a double Jeep for the U.S. forces at all. Um, honestly, having uh, teching for the Jeep uh, with the uh, veterancy promotion to have a cap is something that I'm, I'm, I'm used to, of course, but having two Jeeps is something I've never thought of, uh, kind of like playing as the DAC with two motorcycles or something like that, but it's definitely interesting. Um, I actually had some questions about that. Do you mind explaining it? So, yeah. So I think uh, one, like I said, uh, during the cast, pretty common opening in the kind of the previous balance and they, they nerfed the Jeep a little bit and the Jeep kind of build and fast deploy. That's actually why they added the command point requirement for the fast deploy is because people were spamming the Jeeps early. It is kind of a high risk, high reward strategy, right? Because the Jeeps, they, they take damage, but you don't necessarily bleed manpower as long as you can keep the Jeeps alive, right? And I think uh, that's where uh, Quarzum had his first like bit of uh, luck or skill, depending on how you view it, laying mines in the rear area. So as the Jeeps pursued or went to cap, one of the Jeeps hit a mine, uh, instant kill there, and that immediately swings things in Quarism's favor, right? That's like, at this point, early in the game, that's like losing a squad uh, right out of the uh, right out of the gate. And oh, and that hurts. It, it does, right? And then you saw that in full counters, like really lack of field presence. He eventually got three rifle squads out but it felt like he just didn't have the army composition uh, and immediately fell behind, which means you fall behind on capping, you fall behind on resources, uh, and it really hurts. Two Jeeps, when used effectively, though, it's the same thing as like using half-tracks, crowd shoots, and uh, for the DAC. You can soak up a lot of damage without bleeding manpower, and that allows you to build a bigger army and then spread the field out. Um, so it, it's a viable strategy, but it can be countered. And good players, uh, like you saw, will use mines, will use snares uh, to mitigate the value of that ultralight vehicle start. Oh, for sure. And hats off to Quarzum for being able to just completely adapt and start laying mines as soon as he saw the Jeeps. I mean, for me myself, I, I'm kind of like a deer in the headlights when that's when that kind of stuff happens. Like, uh, like a Jeep will come at me and I start screaming. So like, I don't. <laughs> I, sometimes I don't know what to do. But uh, like, being level headed in these games is like so important, and being able to like make control decisions and and make sure your micros up and and laying mines is just one of those micros that you can do to to swing games in your favors. Like everyone says, mines wins games. Yeah, and so uh, you know, a couple things uh, like indicators, right? So when the first Jeep comes out. And it's got the veteran C star. Like that should trigger in your head immediately. Okay, armored battle group, and he chose uh, immediate vet one. So there's now a chance that he's gonna lean into that light vehicle play. So even if you don't see a second Jeep, 
you know the greyhounds are coming right mm -hmm. and so you should immediately kind of adjust your build and actually i, I think quarzim did that right two bursa squads into panzer jaegers so even though bursa is a really good anti-infantry but very little anti-vehicle utility and so the fact that he only built two of those main lines tells me that he was anticipating the vehicle play right and so you saw it with the panzer jaegers the flak track uh, when used appropriately and upgraded the right way, can counter some of the light vehicles, and you saw him do it with the the white phosphorus rounds a couple of times. So oh, I th yeah. I think he read that, and I think he was ready for it, which is you know a good indicator of like high level play. Oh, I completely agree. And uh, being able to just completely adapt and go for the light support company and getting out those Panzer Jaegers, which I think is a fantastic change. If you guys didn't know before, you had to wait for the call-in for the Panzer Jaegers, but now you can just build them straight out of the company, the light support company. I think that was fantastic. Um, and having both of them being vet three, might I add, at the very <laughs> end of the game, I mean, just completely making sure they're in camouflage, keeping them alive, making sure they still have a field presence. I mean, that's just another aspect and another piece of all this like small micro these high level players are used to on a daily basis. Yeah, I do want to point out one thing I really liked the second Panzer Jaeger squad that came with the half track, he used them in the half track to hunt down that Jeep. That's a good answer to the Jeep's mobility, because otherwise your Panzerjäger squad, like your best way to use them is leave them in camouflage, basically hope you get a first salvo off in the Jeep and that he's too deep to micro away. By putting them in the half track, you can chase down that vehicle. Uh, and then likewise, when the half track was overwhelmed, he had the presence of mind to pop the Panzerjägers out of the half track before it was destroyed, minimizing the chance of him losing that squad. Um, so yeah, just good, uh, well-prepared micro all the way around. Uh, Quarzum played this one pretty well. Um, drive bys win games too. I tell you what, <laughs> just the drive by and the clown car. That's what's up. Yeah, that's what and, I like to see. And and this map's interesting. You saw it a couple of times with both players kind of starting in like adjacent corners, and a lot of the fuel resources being in opposite corners. As you push to take your opponent's fuel away, your retreat path is super super long and potentially contested. And that cost a uh, full counter a couple of squads in this game, a scout squad and a rifle squad relatively early. Um, and it can be really hard to recover from those early losses. Um, like we talked about, I think he had a route back and you were saying like, oh man, I really thought he was going to turn this around. And if you look at the mini map at the end of the match, he had a solid half of the map. The problem uh, was that he dove the base with his last couple vehicles. And that was really it. If he had somehow... <laughs> been able to have a couple of like perfect engagements kill the flak track kill a panzer squad he already killed the bursas if he kills that p3 and still has a chaffee and a couple of greyhounds with those at guns and support this becomes a wide open match and now you have quarzum on the back foot trying to manage his vp lead so this could totally have gone the other way just a you know a couple of unlucky engagements i personally really like the aggression uh, the full counter showed like it's always more fun to cast uh, people being really, really aggressive with their units than guys that are constantly conserving. But um, thinking about, you know, from my point of view, that's really the way he had uh, to play to get back in this game. And it just didn't work out for him. Uh, unfortunate, honestly, for full counter. I think both players did a fantastic job uh, giving us a good show here. I mean, I love Co3 because no matter what game I play, it's always carnage, and that's what I like to see. I mean, it was a it was a bloodbath, and it was fantastic to to see for sure. That's true. Well, Stealth, super fun having you on. Uh, love the vibe you bring to the game. Uh, this is a lot of fun for me to cast. I love the discussion. Yeah, and everyone else out there, uh, we'll see y'all in the next one.